हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल वी आर स्टडिंग क्लास 11 फिजिक्स इन विच वी आर स्टडिंग चैप्टर फोर मोशन इन अ प्लेन सो नाउ टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू री स्टडी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंस्टेंटेनियस वेलोसिटी एंड इंस्टेंटेनियस एक्सिलरेशन बट यू माइट वंडर दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड दिस इन चैप्टर थ्री बट नाउ वट द चेंज विल बी दैट दिस टू कॉन्सेप्ट विल बी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन वैक्टर फॉर्म and then we will again represent these two physical quantities with their components right so let us first start with instantaneous velocity suppose there are two points a and b whose coordinates are x1 y1 and coordinate of b are x2 y2 right now let us suppose that r1 is the position vector of the first one so we will represent this as x1 i plus y1 j along with the unit vectors okay and what will be r2 then position vector of point b this will be x2 i plus y2 j right so r1 and r2 are the position vector now what is velocity velocity is displacement upon time so let us find out the displacement r1 and r2 right so displacement vector let us write delta r and that will be r2 vector minus r1 vector so what it will be final minus initial so i'm writing x2 minus x1 i plus y2 minus y1 j note that i and j must be repeated along with the components so if x2 minus x1 is delta x i plus y2 minus y1 is represented by delta y j this will be our final delta r now we know that instantaneous velocity for instantaneous velocity average values will not be accountable so what we did in previous chapter was to take limit delta t tends to 0 of delta r by delta t you have to remember the previous concept of chapter 3 right average value was velocity equals to delta r by delta t but when we take instantaneous we have to limit the delta t near to 0 right so what that became we can just represent or replace delta r by this delta x i plus delta y j upon we have delta t right now what will be uh, the next step delta t will be given to both the component so limit delta t tends to 0 it will be delta x i upon delta t plus limit delta t tends to 0 delta y j upon delta t so what we did we just split up the x and y component now we all know that when we remove this limit delta t tends to 0 this triangle converts into d so that will be dx by dt and here it will be dy by dt dy by dt don't forget to put the i and j component and this is nothing but our instantaneous velocity but in vector form now what we can do is to split up this vector form in components so this might be the x component of velocity and this might be the y component of velocity so same way we can write this in short as v equals to vx i plus vy j clear so now uh, what about the magnitude and direction so let us see that so instantaneous velocity we derived that v equals to vx i plus vy j this is along the x axis and this is along the y axis now what is vx actually let me write again vx is dx by 
dt and what is vy vy is dy upon dt now talking about the magnitude what will be the formula to find out the magnitude of this velocity instantaneous velocity if the velocity vector is in component form so again we will write the vector in between the modulus whole square root and square of vx plus square of vy so this will give you the magnitude now what about the direction direction will be tan theta equals to always the y component in numerator vy upon vx now making it more simpler it will be theta equals to tan inverse vy upon vx so this was all related to instantaneous velocity now doing the same thing for instantaneous acceleration but again that will be in vector form and along with the components now as per the definition of in average acceleration it is delta v upon delta t delta v is change in velocity we have converted this into vector form right but average acceleration will not tell how the velocity changed at each moment so for that again what we have to do we have to find out instantaneous acceleration uh, generally instantaneous acceleration is called acceleration uh, you all know the si unit that is meter per second square now how to convert average acceleration into instantaneous acceleration so just take delta t tends to zero that means this will turn into x instantaneous acceleration but here we will add limit delta t tends to zero and we will repeat delta v vector upon delta t now if the limit goes we are just replacing this triangle with d and so instantaneous acceleration becomes dv upon dt but what next we will do is to replace v in terms of its component so vxi plus vyj so now replacing that in this formula i am writing in bracket so that you can clearly see the replacement okay so here we have d of vx i plus vyj now again what will be our next step our next step will be to give dt to both of them so that will become dvxi upon dt plus dvyj upon dt now this is nothing but the instantaneous acceleration in terms of velocity right but can we replace dv by dt so in x axis we can replace dvx by dt as ax that will be acceleration in x axis x direction same way dvy by dt can be replaced as ay that is the y component of acceleration now what we did over here is just replace dv by dt to a right dv by dt to a if it was x it we replaced it as x if it was near y direction we replace it as a1 right so this is the x component of acceleration we will write x component and this is the y component of acceleration okay so this is the formula of instantaneous acceleration along with its component now quickly let us see what might be the formula for magnitude so this will be under square root ax whole square plus ay whole square and related to direction it will be theta equals to tan inverse ay upon ax so this was all about instantaneous acceleration remember directly we cannot obtain instantaneous acceleration so we have to start with change in velocity convert into velocity components then split them and then change into acceleration components clear now few important points are to be taken care of while studying instantaneous acceleration that is in one dimension velocity and acceleration are always along the same line in two and three dimension means in plane and in space velocity and acceleration vectors may be inclined at any angle from 0 to 180 
now in one dimension if you see velocity and acceleration if they are along the same direction it will be positive acceleration means acceleration will increase the magnitude of velocity but if acceleration is opposite to the velocity this will be retardation that means if they are opposite then magnitude of velocity will decrease so this was along the one dimension now if we sp speak about two dimension there are two cases possible either 90 degree or inclined at an angle so if the acceleration vector is perpendicular to the velocity vector it will change the direction of velocity right so only direction of velocity will change but if acceleration is inclined at any angle so here you can see acceleration and velocity is inclined at an angle theta so what we did is to split the acceleration vector into the components so one will be along y axis one will be along x axis now the acceleration component which is perpendicular to velocity is along y axis you can see over here so again by this rule this perpendicular component of acceleration will only change the direction of velocity but if we take about the parallel component see over here acceleration and velocity are in same direction this red dot line is nothing but the parallel component of acceleration so this component will only change the magnitude so if it is inclined at any angle the perpendicular component will change the direction of velocity and the parallel component will change the uh, well, magnitude of velocity clear so this was this were few important points related to instantaneous acceleration now let us solve a numerical related to velocity and acceleration here position vector is given with respect to time that is t square i plus 3tj plus 24k note that it is with respect to time now we have to first find out the formula for velocity and then we have to go for finding the magnitude and direction of velocity at 2 seconds right so let us obtain the formula for velocity we all know that velocity at any instant of time that is let us write it as v t and that is dr upon dt now we have been given the r the position is given so we will just replace it with t square i caret plus 3 t j caret plus 24 k caret now one by one we have to split and do the differentiation we all know that t square differentiation with respect to time will be 2 t don't forget to write the component over here it was 3 t so 3 will be written outside and dt by dt will be 1 so this will be 3 j and 24 k doesn't have any component of t so the differentiation will be 0 so this is the formula for the velocity that we are finding now moving on to part b at t equals to 2 second what will be the velocity it will be 2 into we are just replacing t with 2 right so it will be 2 into 2i plus 3j that is nothing but 4i plus 3j so velocity at 2 second is 4i plus 3j what will be the magnitude so it will be 4 square plus 3 square and what is that that is 16 plus 9 and that is 25 so that is 5 meter per second now talking about the direction so that will be theta equals to 10 inverse y component first upon x component so that will be 3 by 4 so that is theta equals to 10 inverse 0 0.75 and if you find the value this will be around 37 degree 